All right, so it's recording. Put it on this. So it's not those squares. <coughs> All right, let's do it again. The courteous potato politely sell potato skins as beards to our upon the chins of everyone with cash to spend. Potato beards distinguish one and also are a lot of fun. And when the wearing time is done, then one can chew his beard like gum. But Frances is contrarian. So though she loves her tuber feds, she will not jump aboard this tread and leaves her chin as her own skin. In class, she shares how Mr. Lau boasts proudly of his bushy brows. So later on, she visits farms to potatoes with her charms. She's stricken by Sir Tay Topo, a spy beloved high and low, and known best because of how he has the best potato brows. So Frances musters up her cute and makes up a sob story too. And soon enough, Sir Poe is sold, both hard words and vision and bone. Next week, Frances enters into business with potato men, with Sir Topo as her spokesman, an urgent hurry to begin. And thus Poe Tweezers came to be. They formed a happy LLC and dealt with Brown's company, and the people had a spud brow spree. And now with Mr. Lau again, it's Francis's turn to present. But Francis doesn't talk of how she made a big potato brows. Instead, she wants to talk of beards. But Mr. Lau, who was sick of hearing speeches of the beardiness, made rules to prohibit it. So Frances navigates this wall. She talks of Dr. Caterwa, Jerome D. Hugers, who was tall and pale and humorless and bald. But Dr. Hugh but Dr. Hugers also had a foremost place in making fads. And he in fact began the trend when he once talked potato chins. He claimed the chins were curative and great if you preferred to live. But secretly, he had it led, which shouldn't go upon your head. So when the people started getting sick, the doctor pulled a nifty trick. He changed his name and moved away so people couldn't make him pay for all the damage he had done. He kept the money, made a run, and settled near Francis's house and called himself now Mr. Lau. But Francis had researched the law before Paul Tweezer, so she got the information she had needed to learn her teacher had defeated the Forest Service and the cops, the FBI karate chops, detectives roaming far and wide to claim reward on Huger's high. So when the student's speech was done, then Mr. Lau began to run. So no one's heard or seen him since, as it should be, till he repents. Okay. We need to do a little bit more of the gestures in the latter half of the speech. The first half is fine. Um... One I want to add right now before we watch this back is